Hello, good morning, welcome. We are officially on day three of our five day six figure with soul challenge. Now, we have got a freaking amazing day planned today. I'm really excited. We are diving into taking your crazy and capturing it as your superpower. And I'm going to explain exactly what I mean by that in a moment. Um, I'm going to do it in a slightly different way with you today. We're going to have some fun. Um, so <laughs> it's going to be awesome. You're going to love it. And the other thing that I really want to talk to you today um, about is the secret to magic marketing. And it might not be what you think. Um, so I'm really excited to dive into that with you. As you are hopping on, it's so lovely to see you. Um, say good morning. If you're watching the replay and you're one of those people who haven't been able to be live with me, but you've been freaking amazing at catching up each day and being there and watching the content and still posting the tasks and everything, I just want to say massive well done. And it's awesome, awesome, awesome to have you here as well. So let me see who's here and then let's dive in for a fabulous day three. And those of you who are here with me, I just want to say like hats off, well done, because it is that kind of slump day Wednesday where everything is happening and people are maybe feeling a bit tired and all those other things going on. So well done for being here, for making the commitment and absolutely being in that place where you go, hell yes, 2020 is the year my business is growing big time. Um, <laughs> I am in a slightly funny mood today. Um, so who knows what will happen on the live stream. Um, but we're going to have some fun. And I'm also going to share with you some really slightly deeper stuff that I think is going to help you start turning things around. So Eleanor, it's lovely to see you gorgeous. Is it Hyacinth? I hope I said that right. Good morning. Uh, I don't know if it's Layla or Lila. Um, hello, gorgeous. Faye, hello. Flo, good morning. Alison, good morning. Hello, Ginny. Hello, Elaine. Um, Nora, good morning, gorgeous women. Um, it's our oh, Regan's watching too. Mwah. Kisses to gorgeous Regan. Regan's a little, little wee baby. Um, so, <clears throat> so, day one right? Think back to day one, all that time ago on Monday, we dived into visibility and we started to talk about um, how you can get more visible in your business and the importance of standing strong as the lighthouse who shines their light brightly rather than being that speedy little lifeboat trying to save everyone one person at a time. Um, and really the, the underneath of Monday was really about helping you to see that it's your job to be visible, that you've got this gift, that you've got this thing, that you're passionate about it. And you probably feel right now, maybe in that space where you're like, I just want to make X amount of money and I just want to be able to do this. I don't care about being super visible. I don't want to be famous. I don't want to be this. I don't want to be that, which is fair enough. And I absolutely understand it. But at the same time, what you do helps people and there are people who desperately need you because you'll do it in your own unique way. And so we need to flip that switch a little bit on you so that you're excited to be seen, so that you feel more confident. And I'm going to talk about confidence in a little while. Um, but it's really from that place of not being busy, not searching for clients. I remember when I was in that place a number of years ago and I was desperately trying to build my business and I was really struggling. It was not happening easily. <laughs> you might look at me now and think, well, it's all right for her because she's clearly, you know, got the clients and doing the thing and making the income and lucky her. Um, but it was not like that at the beginning. I can assure you it was a really, it was hellish hard work. Um, and I forgot what I was about to say. Uh, back, the, the thing that was going around my head all the time, my own self-talk at the time was, where are the clients? Where can I find these clients? And so I felt like I was on this search. I was almost the lifeboat that was racing over all the waves, desperately searching, like, where are they? Where are they? Where are they? And in doing that, I was wasting all of my energy and not showing up in my power. And that's why at that time, people were not investing in me. It's why people weren't seeing me as the leader, as the coach, as a mentor who could really help them. Because I wasn't claiming my worth. I was instead trying to build my business from this place of desperation and scarcity. And I think it's a place that we can all really fall into, especially at the beginning of growing our business, or if you go through a bit of a slump where you feel like it's not happening, and we need to change that. So that was kind of the core of day one. 
Um, by the way, as you listen to this, um, one of the things I would love you to pop in, because it would just be really helpful for me and it's lovely to see, is from day one, from day two, what's your biggest little aha? What's your best takeaway so far from the training? I would love to see it. Maybe you could type that in for me while I'm talking through this. Um, day two, we talked about making your message more magnetic. And what I mean by that is we need to make your, your message so magnetic, so clear, so compelling to your soul clients because it's when you speak your total truth and when you connect from that deeper core level, from that values level, from that level of who you really are and your vision for the world and what you're passionate about, it's that that really connects with the right people in a much deeper way. So it's not not just the surface based well this is my ideal client and it's a man or a woman in this age and this is what she does or he does we want to go deeper to who is this person really because that's when we we create that magnetic message do not ask me what's going on with this top today I could not decide how many buttons to have open or close <laughs> do I need to close another button I'm not sure <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, should I close another button? Lucy Gorgeous, it's lovely to see you this morning. Uh, the amazing difference between being the lighthouse and being the lightboat. Lila, Layla, <laughs> gorgeous. Barbara, it's lovely to see you. So we dived into that. So today, we want to take all of that a step further because when it comes to our business, our potential clients will only accept us as fully as we accept ourselves. That's number one. And number two is it's hard to receive that money that you want to make in your business if you're not truly valuing yourself and your work. Because what you're doing is you're driving the car and you've got one foot on the accelerator and one foot on the brake because you're not believing it. So subconsciously you are blocking it and maybe even sabotaging yourself, even though you might say, hell no, Claire, I'm not stupid. I'm not going to sabotage ourselves. But our subconsciouses, our subconsciouses, I don't think that's a word, are so freaking clever that they will, they will make us believe that we are doing it all and it's happening but if we've got those blocks inside of us we are not the right energetic match to receive that money that you probably are saying i just want to make x amount in our business in my business so we want to dive into that today and then the other thing i want to have a conversation around as well is last week i put a little post in the group saying what's the biggest takeaway you'd like to get from this challenge and so many people put confidence. And I was like, oh my God, what? Because um, I did not expect people to say that. And so I also want to have just a brief conversation about confidence. But actually, can you see all of this is about confidence? Because this is where it starts. Yes, we need strategies. And yes, we need to build our knowledge and understanding of marketing and how we do that and what we do within our visibility and how we enhance our message more and how we sell it. So all these parts of the puzzle are really, really important, but they mean nothing, nothing if at the core you are not building that certainty and confidence in yourself. And here's the biggest shift that transformed how I was showing up in my business and transformed my results that time ago when I was struggling. Because at the time, as I said, I was searching for the clients, but the other thing that I was doing is I was thinking, I will feel more confident when. When I've made my first 5K month, then I'll feel really confident. When I've got more clients coming in, then I'll then I'll feel this way, and then I'll kind of own it more, and then I'll you know feel freer to do the things that I want to do. And that is not how it works. Just tell me, does this resonate? Do do you find yourself falling into this? So I was in the hole. When this, then that. When I'm earning more money, I'll feel more confident. When more clients come into me, like I'll be, I'll be owning it, and I'll be great, and it'll be easy, and I'll make time for myself, and I'll look after myself, and I'll do. Um, and it was a massive aha one day when I woke up and realised that actually it's about us quantum leaping forwards to the version of ourselves who is already there, who is already hitting that goal that you have. So whether it's 5K months, 10K months, fully booked with clients, six figure years, whatever it might be for you, and you'll all be in totally different places and that's fine because it's what's aligned for you. Right, I am gonna have to button another button on this top because basically my whole bra is showing. <laughs> right, is that better? Right. 
slight detour, pause, pause for the change. Um, okay, so what we do is we quantumly pass our forward to that place where we've already reached the goal. And we operate from that place. We step into that future version of ourselves and we bring that version of ourselves back to today and that's how we show up. That's who we choose to be. As the woman who is making the 5K month, the 10K month, fully booked with client, owning her stuff, knowing her values, selling with ease, showing up, running her business effortlessly, feeling like that CEO who's making a difference and owning her business and like super successful entrepreneur and it just all like whatever the things are that that light you up and so when it comes to confidence instead of allowing that self-talk that goes oh but but I'm not enough and I'm not ready and what if and I'll feel more confident when and oh I just wish I could feel a bit more confident and all those kind of things that you might say to yourself and I remember saying to myself back then it's about taking that and going hang on Confidence, actually, firstly, I think is a choice. It's an emotion, and like any emotion, we can step into it. We can actually, we can create it within ourselves. Um, that's the first thing. And the second thing is, um, it's just about quantum leaping forwards and being the woman now who you see in the future. Is this making sense? Let me see some of these ahas, and then we're gonna dive into today's content, taking your crazy and capturing it as your superpower um, and to, so let me just tell you what today is about today is about really activating your fullest potential because when you're in that place of judgment of doubt of holding yourself back of not fully owning everything that you are and shining your light no strategy no funnel no system is going to work as well as you want it to because it all starts with you. So we need to flick that switch on you. We need to get you seeing your freaking greatness because every single one of you are great, are amazing, and there are huge amounts to give to the world. That's where we need to start. And I'm going to show you how to do that in a really fun way. Um, so good morning, Lana, gorgeous. Eleanor, day one, the lighthouse. I flip between this and the life board, the lifeboats, and I need to be just one and conserve energy. Yes, boom. Uh, it was day two that I had my aha regarding clients' values. Awesome. Uh, no, you like the look like, oh, I've changed it now. Never mind. Um, day two, accepting me as me. Uh, Monica, good morning. Elaine, yes, you fall into that. Yes. Okay. Aha, uh -huh, yes. I keep trying to learn new things and start thinking I procrastinate. Yes. Here's one of the biggest mistakes I see, and it's one of the biggest mistakes I fell into as well. When I first started coaching, well, not even when I first started, actually, even a number of years later every time I would look at my business and think, oh, I need to, like, I need to grow the business. I need to be bringing in more clients. I need to bring in more income. I need to, you know, when I was in that kind of place, so often I would go and invest in another coaching course. I know I'll go and learn NLP. I know I'll go and learn tapping. I'll know I'll go and do a master course in coaching. I know I'll go and do this as if by getting better and better and better at this, the clients would magically show up. And the one thing I wish, um, the one thing if I could go back in time and have a conversation with my past self is I would say, stop freaking trying to learn more and more and more. You're good enough already as you are. The problem is that you are not being visible, not owning your worth and not selling. So get out there and do that, girl. That's what I'd have said. I'd have said either invest in a coach, a mastermind, a training or something that's going to help you start showing up and be, being visible and doing those things and really owning your power rather than con constantly like reinvesting in the learning um who does that as well by the way because i bet there's some of you who do um, okay so quick reminder before we carry on each day you want to be liking <laughs> liking the video giving me a comment and then taking the daily task i absolutely love some of the tasks that were coming through yesterday they were amazing and you are on fire so give me a little love heart shower if you're ready for today's content, if you're intrigued about how you take your crazy and you capture it as your superpower. You excited? Do you want to see it? Do you want to know? <laughs> okay, I'm going to tell you. I'll just pause for coffee. Okay, the love hearts, the, the likes, they're coming through. Love it. Okay, 
So when we get, as I was saying, when we get sucked into the I'm not enoughness, how can I be more um, self-judgment if I just was a bit more this or if I was just a little bit more that or if I knew that better or if I did this better or when I feel more confident or whatever, all we do is get in our own way. So what we need to do is we need to flip that I was going to say a really bad swear word then, but I managed to stop myself. It began with an Emma Effer um, <laughs> on its head, because um, that might be a little bit too much to say on a live. Um, <laughs> it nearly just flew out because I was feeling so passionate about it. Um, we need to turn that on its head. We need you to start seeing that the ways in which you judge yourself are actually some of your superpowers. So I want you to do this with me. I'm gonna get you to type this into the comments because I wanna see what's coming up. I want, you own, I want you to own it. I want you to take action on this because you're gonna find it really super freaking amazingly valuable when you start seeing this in a different way. So, so what are the things all the areas where you judge yourself. What are the things or the areas where you judge yourself where, and these are things by the way that you've probably been doing since being a child and at some time you decided it wasn't okay. So maybe the six year old you, the seven year old you was doing these things and an adult somewhere, probably a loving, caring adult said, oh, you can't do that because, or like stop being so noisy, stop being so loud, don't be this, don't be that, don't be And what are those things that you got at that time and you decided within yourself, mm -mm -mm, I shouldn't be doing that, but they've always been there inside of you. And you can't really shake them because it's part of who you are, but you still judge them and you use it as fuel to pull yourself apart at times or to hold yourself back at times or to tell yourself you're just not ready or you can't receive that much or you can't charge that much for your programs because, 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 because. What I want you to do is I want you to start thinking about this. I want you to write them down. and I want you to put them in the comments. I'm going to share mine to give you an idea. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, Monica says, it's never too much to speak your truth, Claire. I know, I agree, but Facebook might disagree if they heard me saying that and might cancel the live stream. Um, and that would not be very useful. <laughs> I agree though, Monica. Okay, so let me tell you some of mine. And these are ones that I honestly picked up as a child, that primary school kind of age, and I carried them around me for my entire life. And it's only quite recently that I've gone much deeper on this and started to unravel them and see them in a totally different way and kind of ha have a huge aha around actually like this is the essence of me actually and this is my whole superpower and it's when I allow this superpower more that I really create incredible results for myself in my life and not only that I'm my happiest and most switched on and most alive so let me tell you so the first one for me was daydreamer daydreamer I was a child who stared through the window daydreaming about all the things all day and every single freaking parents evening the teacher would say literally these words if Claire spent less time daydreaming and actually focused on her work she could be a genius those exact words and I still hear them like echoing around my head today and so at some point I decided that being a daydreamer Mm -mm. not okay if you want to be successful um so I took that and I turned it in a way into a thing into a way that I would judge myself oh my god I'm such a daydreamer I need to get on and do the work that's what it turned into what are yours start telling me my second one um this is not just a hey I'll like share my soul with you I want you to share your soul with me <laughs> this is a give and take a take and give a share moment um so you're a perfectionist, so perfectionist might be the one for you. Thank you for sharing that. And you lead yourself on a destructive path. Chatterbox, wow. So I want you to list all the ones that come up. I don't want you to just think one. I want you to think, and what else, and what else, and what else. So first of mine was Daydreamer. Second of mine was this wild imagination. Oh, that girl has a wild imagination. That would be the thing. As a, as a child, I honestly believed that I could fly. I used to dream every night about flying, and I was obsessed with flying, and I would wait up in the morning still thinking I'm sure if I could just get this takeoff right I could fly <laughs> I was convinced of it right um I had um, and I would tell people about 
all kinds of things you know I had like my little spider hospital and I had all kinds of things and people would go oh my gosh Claire has such a wild imagination but it was kind of, it wasn't like a wow Claire has such a wild imagination it was like a oh my gosh Claire has such a wild imagination so again I took it I judged it hmm Claire's a bit crazy she's the Alice in Wonderland who dives down the hole and gets lost in this weird wild world um because I was also the child who would see all kinds of things I would sit with the fairies I'd have people visit me at night we'd have amazing conversations um there would be magic everywhere um but Claire had a wild imagination show I took it I flicked that switch I turned it off because I thought hmm wild imagination equals weird people judge you people don't like you because I was also like a bit of bit of an outsider at school because I was the weird one right I was the weird one who talked to fairies and all kinds of freaking things um so that was the second one for me keep on typing yours as you think about them third one for me my grandma can you believe this like this is like a super secret share session isn't it? I feel like I might share all my secrets <laughs> um, my grandma would say oh she's so bloody minded <laughs> that girl so bloody minded what she meant by that is I was so determined when I had something in my head it was going to happen I would not let it go until I got my way can you start seeing how these are actually my superpower can you start seeing that now but I did not realize that I judged this I thought oh my gosh I like I'm too like bossy and pushy and I'm bloody minded around these things that I want and maybe I should let go a little bit and not do it. And so again, I judged myself. I held myself back. I felt like I was being too much in some way. Uh, other things, just to go through them quickly before we carry on, but just to, because I want to kind of get your juices flowing so that you're tapping back into those things that were yours. So things like the rule breaker. If, if something didn't make sense to me, I would break that rule. Like I hate rules and still today, I hate rules that are there just for rules sake. It's like, why is that rule there? It's ridiculous. There is no need for it. And so I will basically just break the rule. Um, and, but again, think about how that might be great now. So the other thing was I was a bit of a performer. Um, my granddad would call me Lady Cadaver. I don't know if you know Lady Cadaver, but she, she apparently, I didn't find this out till years later, she rode naked on a horse. Um, so, <laughs> um, so yes, I was Lady Cadaver, the performer who would sing and dance around the house. And you can probably see now there's a bit of that performer. I like to have fun. I think I'm hilarious most of the time, other people don't, but I have a lot of fun in the meantime. Um, so what are the, so let me have a look um, there are a few other ones so but you get the gist right you're on the same page as me let me have a look at what you put in so we've got Lucy saying in the chat box Faye being attractive be, being seen as sexy and attractive wow um, Lana airy fairy Monica also the daydreamer but they used to call me an artist um, from a from a burnt out from a burnt out I'm not sure the last bit it doesn't make sense but amazing um Ginny too sensitive and shy yes I, I sometimes get that occasionally as well um Lucy scatty Monica theatre um Eleanor too driven um wow I ended up being frustrated if they don't live up to your expectations so high expectations as well I I used to get that you've got such high expectations all the time um sporadic perfectionist uh, same as Ginny stop being sensitive don't be so shy have more conviction I love it perfectionism okay that's that's good um I still talk to people that are not physically in front of me yes Laura I do too and I've realized it's totally my superpower um, I won't I won't take can't um, you wouldn't take can't as it yeah okay I used to get into trouble as I found ways to get what you wanted yes totally Eleanor me too um, you would be the black sheep yes Faye uh, being seen being outspoken sensitive needed to toughen up being in the limelight uh, upsetting others by saying what you think wow and um, earning without going to university wow shy up quite stubborn yes so here's the thing I want you to look at this now and I want you to literally flip it on its head. How can you see these things as things that are actually incredible about you, right? So it might mean that you need to change the wording a little bit. So for example, the word quiet. So if you were one of those people and people are like, oh, she's so quiet. 
you weren't just quiet. There was a reason that you were quiet. Maybe you were a deep thinker and you were creating all these things. Maybe you were quiet because you were daydreaming. Maybe you were quiet because you were the observer, like noticing everything around you, like w within that quietness. So you might need to go like a little bit deeper to find out what the actual thing was here. But what I want you to do now is I want you to think about actually how are those things, those things by, by which you felt others judged you and you probably therefore judged you yourself maybe for years how can you take them and flip them on their head and start seeing them as your biggest superpower and this is just FYI this is going to help you with your branding and having a brand that stands out from others because this is part of what makes you unique and different let me tell you what I mean so those things in me that I talked about, it means that today, embracing that, I'm creative, I dream big, I go there, I have like this crazy imagination, I download new information all the time and I love it. And it helps my clients, it helps my business big time because I never run out of content to create and give. Uh, it means I'm not afraid to break the mold. If I can see that there's another way of doing things because that way doesn't make sense, then hell, let's break that mold and do it this way. So again, I can take clients out of that prison they've created for themselves without realizing it, break that apart and let them do it in a way that feels freaking amazing. I never give up. Like if I didn't have these things, can you see I wouldn't have this business? Without these aspects of myself that I used to think were negative aspects and things I needed to hide or push away or stop being, I would have no business today. And when I realized that, it was like, holy shit, wow. Why have I been judging myself for these things? Why have I not realized that this is literally my superpower? How are these things? your superpower and I want you to flip them and turn them around so even those things like quiet shy this stuff beneath that which is absolutely your superpower I want to know what it is what is the superpower uh, okay love it so Wilma says I have ADHD and autism and super talkative and fidgety, also perfectionist, but I'm superb at all I do because these are my superpowers. Boom. Rachel, feisty, forever the optimist. Yes, love it. Yolanda, um, your past hurts and coping mechanisms as your superpower. Hold on. Oh, I think that was from earlier before. Um, uh, hello, Camilla. Um, Lucy, being sporadic means I am present and what is going with what's going on right now and your feet and you're present with your feelings rather than like worrying about the plan. I love it. And it's all about you having fun. Boom. Uh, Amy, you're a risk taker. Oh my God, being a risk taker is so freaking awesome. If people tell me I can't, I just push myself harder to prove them wrong and say, watch me. Um, I dream big and believe you can do anything. Yes. So this is the next step now that I want you to do with this. I want you to start thinking about recognizing that these things are your superpower and it's part of what makes you unique because no one else does the thing that you do in the way that you do it. So your sole clients are only your sole clients. You are, you know, so often I hear people say, but there's a million coaches out there or there's a million other people doing this. Why would someone pay me? The reason why someone would pay you is because you are unique and no one will do exactly what you do with your energy, with your vibration, with your personality in the way that you do it. So your soul clients are only your soul clients. You are the best possible person, whether you're a coach, a teacher, a whatever you might be, for your soul clients and I want you to really embrace this because when you embrace this you get over the fear of but what if like there's so many other people doing this or why would anyone notice me or why would people buy this from me it smashes all of that to the ground because you start seeing yourself, your worth, your value, your uniqueness in a totally different way. And that's what I really want to tune you into today. So the next part of this is I want you to ask yourself, how can you start incorporating this into the message that we talked about, but also into your branding. So your brand image overall, because this is, this is like an aspect of personal branding. How do you bring these things in? 
into your personal branding so that people get that real sense of you, so that they see all of you, so that there's no hiding, so that you really can magnetize those soul clients to you rather than being the busy little lifeboat zooming around the ocean searching for people. Are you with me? Is this making sense? Can you see how you can bring this in? So the way you bring this in, let me give you some examples. Facebook Lives, right? Facebook Lives. You do Facebook Lives. You be all of you. You give yourself permission to be these things. You can. I'm sure you can probably see that in the way that I show up, right? I am so fully just me. <laughs> and I don't care if I talk too fast or I'm a little bit crazy or I'm a little bit messy or whatever. And you'll also find that on these lives, they are creative and they're different and they're fun and they're high vibe, right? And that's because I'm being all of me in it. So how can you bring in all of yourself to the Facebook lives, to the video, to the content, to the posts, to the pictures, to the everything that you put out there that, that is your face of your business, knowing that actually the face of your business is you. It's you at your core. Because when we do that, it starts making a massive freaking impact. <sighs> Uh, being too outspoken, it means I say what really needs to be said. Boom. So powerful. My superpower. I am brave. Yes. Problem solver. Rule breaker. The power force to take my business forward. Yes. Can you feel? Like, you know, as I'm reading these words, I can feel that energy inside of me. Can you feel it? Do you feel tapped into this? Because this Boom, is the energy you want to be tapping into in the morning when you start in your business. It's this feeling of like, flipping heck, I'm unstoppable. I'm amazing. And this isn't coming from a place, by the way, really important to say this. This isn't coming from that place of being like really up your own arse and thinking you're perfect. It's about recognizing that every single one of us are freaking amazing. And instead of beating ourselves up all the time and thinking we're not enough or focusing on what we lack or what we don't have, for once, can we stand in our power and own it and actually choose and dare to shine that bright, brightly to the world? Okay, so are you ready for me to take this to the next level? Um, hello, Alison. It's lovely to see you. Um, okay. There are loads of, I'm like quickly, I'm not reading them out because I follow my words, but I'm quickly scanning through some of these comments so I can just see them because they're lovely and they're amazing and they're super, super powerful. Um, Lana, your parrot's listening again. That's so funny. Um, okay, right, boom. Next one. So we've looked at like what came up as a child and how we've judged ourselves and how we flipped that around into our superpower. Next thing is I want you to take... I like this bit that I'm about to do with you. I'm very excited. I've never done this before, but I think it's quite fun. Um, I want you to think of like the ways that other people really trigger or annoy you. What are the things on social media like that really trigger that that trigger you. And I'm, again, I'm going to give you some examples. But what I'm talking about is when you judge others. Who is it? What types of people? You don't not who is it? Don't like start typing names in. Don't don't give me any names. But who are the people, or what is the behaviour that you judge when you see it on social media? Right. This is where I'm getting you to like really go there. Be honest because let's let's own this we're all human we all judge people we judge other people because we judge ourselves right we're gonna go we're gonna look at this in a moment um and judgment can actually really help us but we're taught it's bad to judge other people which you know maybe but it depends it depends how we use it i think um but i want you to go there for a moment i want you to give yourself permission to be like yes okay i'll be honest like, I judge that person when I see them doing that. Uh, I judge that person when I see them doing that. When someone does that kind of post or that kind of thing, I judge them because, let me tell you, some of mine. Um, some of these are ones, actually, these are probably things that, because I'm sharing and teaching them with you now, I've obviously spent time unraveling these in myself already. I've kind of had that awareness and I've done work on it. I'm not saying it's done because it's an ongoing thing. Um, but let me share some of them in mine. So the first one. I actually wrote some of these down. Where have I written them down? 
the first one for me was when I saw people being lazy lazy um and i would be really a really hard judge of that oh my god that person's so lazy oh, i'm gonna flip it around in a minute but that's one of mine lazy when i see people being lazy triggers me triggers me still does a little bit but nothing like it used to so that was what second thing was when i saw a woman really owning her queen energy and i can call that that i know it's that now but back then i didn't i used to think she was like showing off full of it look at me I'm amazing I'm the freaking queen um it used to again this is really different now and I'm going to share how it's different in a moment uh, but it used to really trigger me who does she think she is why is she all that the inner bitch would appear a little bit um what are, what are some of those things for you that's what I want to hear the other thing is when people were boasting boasting, notice the word I use there, um, about earning six figures and my 50k month and how I just earned a trillion dollars in a day and I'm freaking amazing. That was the other thing. So they were just a couple. I could go on because I'm honest, but I won't. Because I'm honest and because I'm real, but I won't. Um, <laughs> um, what are those things that trigger you? What are those things that you judge or that trigger you? This is what I want to see. Uh, the behavior judge which, which pushes your buttons is ignorance, total lack of self-awareness, lazy, and so society zappers. Society zappers? I kind of know what you mean by that though, Eleanor, and I'm on the same page as you. Faye, oh God, this sounds awful. There's a certain coach who said, I'm an attractive, successful woman. And I thought, bloody egotist, that's so funny. Um, okay, what else? Come on, I want to see them. I've shared some of mine. Share yours, because we, we're flipping this around. We're going to change this as well, by the way. So think about what they, were, that, what they are and share them. Nobody's judging anyone for saying this in here. We're just owning the fact that we are human. We are absolutely human and we get to be all parts of ourselves. And occasionally, yes, the inner bitch might come out, the judger, the whatever. Um, we don't need to beat ourselves up hugely about that because there's some gold to be gotten when we allow ourselves to look at this. So we're not just doing this for the sake of being a bit bitchy. We're doing this because there is gold in this that is waiting for you to collect it. And that's what I want to go into in a moment. Uh, false uh in all i don't know if it, is that a real word inauthenticity <laughs> i know what you mean though inauthentic yes uh negative focused on money okay fear-based shaming push your buttons poor me mm, okay uh, when people judge single mums okay uh, when people talk about people who grew up on council estates oh uh, i love to see others focusing on personal development owning their glow and shining brightly yes we're doing it the opposite though the opposite way is the thing that triggers you and annoys you and like eek, it go, makes you go, uh, um, that's what I want to say. So let's talk about how we flip this round, right? We flip this round by realizing it's a part of ourselves that we're currently disowning. Let me explain what I might mean by that. For example, if we're triggered by someone who's in that poor me mentality, like the victim mentality, we probably don't allow ourselves to be there. Now, the victim mentality can, is perceived certainly as a really negative thing, right? But the flip side of that is allowing ourselves to be helped and supported. So the question is, how can, if that's one of your things, the question for you is, how can I allow myself to be helped and supported more? So I want you to flip it. So for example, let me tell you about this. For me, lazy was really because deep inside me, I crave to sit back and do nothing for a little while and just to sit and watch some rubbish on the TV and not worry about doing the things and looking after the kids and like running around like a crazy chicken all the time. There was a part of me that desperately just wanted to be a bit lazy, right? Can you see it? The other thing is queen energy. It was because I wasn't owning myself fully. Like, who is she to do that when I can't see that greatness in myself? Well, actually, it's my job to see the greatness in myself and to own my own queen energy and say, hell yes, I'm a queen and I'm amazing and I'm good at what I do. And I deserve to feel like supported and make the light, that make the difference and shine my light and do these kind of things and kind of own my value and show up in that. Those people who were talking about like the six figures, the seven figures, the 
trillion trillion dollars that they were making in like two hours it was annoying me because I wanted to be making more of that money myself so all of these things were actually the triggers were things that I was not allowing myself to have because of my stories because of my limiting beliefs and therefore because of the filter I was going through. So actually, when I flipped this around, I was like, okay, so lazy, what's that? Well, clearly, I want more time for me. I want to be able to just stop and do nothing. So how do I give myself that gift? Queen energy. How do I just start owning that queen energy myself? The day that I had that aha moment, I changed what I call myself in my business. And I went on Instagram and I went on my little thing on my email and I changed it to um, soul, soul Business Activation Queen. I was like, queen, we are owning the queen. No longer, I, I like resisting that part of me and thinking I'm not good enough to own that energy and be in that energy. So this is where we can really grow ourselves and step into a whole new level of ourselves by seeing these things, flipping them around and actually going, how can I own this on a whole new level that's going to make me more impactful, um, clearer with my message, more magnetic, more all of these kind of things. Does that make sense? Give me some love hearts because I just want to know that you're on the same page as me because I have not taught it from this perspective before, but I think that there's real value in sharing this with you today. Um, so tell me, is it making sense? Give me a love heart. If not, if you've got like Claire, I don't understand, feel free to ask a question. Lila, uh, but no, no. Uh, Na Natalie, do I, is it Natalie? Is it spelled in an interesting way? Um, beautiful. Pouty selfies, which appear, appear superficial, saddens me are, as they appear to be seeking praise and validation. Just be real. So, is there a part of you that wants to be a bit more extroverted with, hey, this is me, look at me, baby? Um, is there a part of you that wants to just own it a little bit more, but obviously in authenticity, but give yourself permission to do the whole like, hell yeah, love me uh, kind of thing, you know? Um, Rachel, also, when fitness gurus are all done and made up, it's not real if you're doing a good workout okay so how so how Rachel are you judging yourself when you're in that sweaty mess how are you feeling like messy and not good enough and not sexy and how can you flip that around and own it more um in all <laughs> in authenticity is a word okay I apologize <laughs> Um, I apologize. Um, Lucy, some men who use hustle and sacrifice. Yes. So what is it in there that you could flip and own a little bit more? Maybe there's a part of you that that likes a bit of the hustle, um, that maybe in some way you're kind of pushing against it. Just have a little look at it. Um, Camilla, yours was, oh, hang on, I've lost it. Where's it gone? Uh, make, who make it look so simple and easy. Yes, yeah, so how can you allow it to be more simple and easier for yourself? How are you making it more difficult by overthinking it and putting on like maybe perfection kind of cloak around it and therefore making it really hard for yourself? How can you let go and allow it to be easier? Uh, sorry, you did that's okay don't worry Lila. Lila Layla I need to know which how to say your name because I'm gonna have to say each name until I know uh Lucy the goddess always used to trigger me boom you've got it um yeah French spelling <laughs> I love it it's beautiful um uh Lana totally makes sense awesome maybe a tiny bit <laughs> uh yes Queen has a bit of a trigger yes the bragging element because we're taught as children don't brag don't boast, don't do these things, but it's like, actually, what if you were just to own your awesomeness? Is it really bragging to say, hey, this is me, this is who I am, I can help my soul clients, and this is how, and I'm just as, what makes Tony Robbins, Oprah Winfrey, the queen, <laughs> more valuable than you? Nothing. You're exact, no, you're not exactly the same in terms of who you are, but there is no difference. It's not like, Oh, well, she can because, but I can't. Poor little me can't because I'm just this. But Oprah, wow, Oprah, she's amazing. She can, of course, do anything she wants. No, like we all get to be all of ourselves. And that's how we make a real beautiful impact in the world. And that's how you grow a business 
that you love that's how you work with the people that you love to work with that's how you build a life that feels free and effortless and fun it's how you get to feel like you're making this gorgeous impact in the world and living your life fully by embracing all of you allowing yourself to shine brightly as this lighthouse then the strategy is easy because you're not blocking yourself it's not like oh my god but i can't do that live or oh my god i can't do that masterclass or oh my god i can't sell in that way because you're owning your value and you're not putting those blocks up again and again and again and again that make it really hard are you with me um so this is at the heart of our businesses and this is powerful and this is a game changer so when we talk about and I talk about this myself, like in my own head to myself, by the way, I will talk about doing the work. And for me, doing the work, yes, is about showing up and doing the lives and building the funnel and creating the programs and supporting amazing women in the mastermind and the academy and the other ways that I do. But actually, the most important work is me unleashing next layer after next layer into my next level next level next level all the time is how can i be more me how can i grow and shine my light brighter knowing that when we give ourselves permission to do that that's when we can really help other people because we've got to be growing and moving forward and owning all of this and walking our talk it does not mean we need to be perfect i'm a very long way from perfect in case of it. <laughs> just in case any of you are thinking oh well claire's perfect <laughs> um no <laughs> i know you won't have been um that's fine um but it's not about us being perfect it's about us seeing how amazing we are and how imperfectly perfect we are because that allows everything else to happen with ease it means when we want to write a message it flows because we're not stopping ourselves or questioning ourselves. It means when you're thinking, oh, I should do a live video, you just show up and you trust that it's going to be this fun, awesome conversation with your soul clients. It means that when you have the idea come through, this incredible way that people can work with you, that you don't then go, oh, but it should be a bit less. I'll charge a bit less. And oh, maybe not that. Oh, maybe not that. And you can change it and change it and change it until it's lost its magic. Are you with me? Uh, Sarah, Sarah Louise, I'm definitely blocking myself at the moment. This is great for me, making me want to push myself. Boom. Awesome. Okay. And this is, I mean, this is what I'm really passionate about. Strategy. Yes. Strategy makes growing your business easier. Having the tools to be more visible and collect emails and do all those kind of things and use it. Facebook advertising. Yes, of course, helps you make a bigger impact because you can reach more people. So these things are really important. And that's why I teach them in when I'm working with women. But at the very heart and core of this, this is it. This is the powerhouse that changes it all. So the final thing I want to talk about, hang on, before I talk about the final thing, I'm going to tell you your task for today. I'm like, where have I written the task? What was the task? Um, I can't remember what the task was. <sighs> okay, I'll have to think on my feet. The task for today is to share how you are taking one of these judgments embracing it as your superpower and one thing you're going to do differently because of that so maybe you could write a post take a selfie a pouting selfie <laughs> whatever you want but i want you to find a way to own something that we've been talking through today i know that's really vague <laughs> i know it's super vague but vague's okay sometimes right so find a way to own something we've talked through today Find a way to own something we've talked through today. It can be anything. The thing that's going to really be the game changer for you. Just like I was sharing that when I had that aha about the queen energy, I was like, right, we are owning that. We are no longer doing this and playing this silly game. I am going to say I have got queen energy inside of me. I am a goddamn queen. And I'm going to show up as the sole activation queen for women who want to grow incredible businesses. Hell yes. And so I took action on it. And I actually did something to own it in a new way. I want you to find a way of doing something to own your superpower in a new way. Now, 
let's just, and this is a short bit because we're going to dive into this more on Thursday and Friday. Friday, by the way, we're going to really dive into selling and pricing and all of those gorgeous things. Tomorrow, we are talking about launching because launching is huge. Some of you will be, oh yes, help me with launching. Some of you might be like, I don't know what launching is. It's okay. We will talk about it tomorrow and you will get super clear. Um, I am tomorrow officially opening doors to my brand new mastermind. It's six months for those women who are at that point where you're like, hell yes, I am ready to grow my big business big time, to do it with more ease, to make more of the money that I absolutely desire and deserve, and to do it in a way that feels really good. Um, I've got a couple of my clients who are going to be hopping on calls this week in here, so you can see their interviews and you can hear them talking about their experience of working with me. Um, this mastermind is not for everyone. It really is for those of you who are ready to kick ass big time, but do it in a gorgeous, expansive way with support every single step so that you've got someone holding your hand so that you've got someone looking at your stuff my eyes will be all over your business i'll be there to see what you're doing how you're showing up to give you those nudges to give you that help to call you out i'll also be teaching you all of the marketing in terms of how do you actually really get visible and build your audience and therefore make those sales. So it's a freaking amazing, super powerful mastermind. Um, I'll be opening up calls so that you can hop on a call with me and we can talk to see if it's an aligned next step for you. It's amazing. Now, however, final part of today, are you ready for this? <sighs> magic marketing. The secrets of magic marketing. And it's probably not what you think. <laughs> so when I, after I'd become a coach and I'd done loads of coach training and I'd done a lot of coaching actually. So I felt I was at that place and who knows where that they're at this place. I was at that place where I was like, I know I'm good at what I do. I know I can really help my clients. How many of you, just give me like a hell yes, have got to that place where you go, I know I'm good at what I do. I know I can help my clients. Give me a hell yes. However, even though I knew that I was good at what I did, the thing that I would play in my head is I just want to be a coach. I don't want to have to market my business and be visible and learn all these things. I don't want to have to go to networking meetings and this and that and all the, all the other things that we're told we need to do. I just want to be a coach and help people. Obviously, I was not business coaching then. <laughs> Otherwise, that would have been out of alignment. Hey, um, but I, I was really just at that place where I just want to do my thing. I don't want to market. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to. And so I've got huge resistance to actually doing anything to grow my audience. Now, within that, I was a bit clever because at the time I lived in New Zealand and I found this very sneaky little way um, because I was trying to find different ways. So I didn't really want to do marketing. I got brochures printed and leaflets done and one of the things I would do every week I'm going to tell you this I would go down to my local bookshop which was this big gorgeous awesome bookshop with a coffee shop and everything and I would get the books off the shelf that were relevant to how I helped people and I would slip my leaflet into each of them and every single week I would get a phone call going hello is that Claire McPherson? Hi, I've seen your leaflet and I couldn't believe it. I went to the bookshop because I'm really struggling with X, Y, and Z and your leaflet was in the book. It was like a message from God. <laughs> and I used to be like, well, yeah, it kind of is because the, the idea clearly came from God or the universe or whatever you want to call it. Um, but I would find different ways to market my business because I had this like real resistance to any of the marketing that did work very successfully. I don't think you could get away with it in England because I think bookshops would like sue you or something potentially. I don't know. Um, so, so what was I going to say? So yeah, I was in this real resistance to doing anything around marketing. And this is one of the things I really want to share with you because this is what changed the game for me. I eventually 
got out of my own goddamn way around this story that I play again and again and again. I just want to do my thing. I don't want to have to mark it. Um, and I realized that, hang on a minute here, Claire, you're saying you want to help people. You're saying you're a really good coach. So why are you not being visible to those people who need your help? Marketing is only really about allowing the people who need your help to see you and get that help that they desire and need and deserve. And so I realized and I flipped it on its head a bit and I was like, oh, I'm being freaking selfish by hiding away here and thinking people need to just somehow magically find me. I need to find a way to fall in love with marketing. And so the number one secret around magic marketing is to find a way for you to find a way to fall in love with marketing. From that place of realizing that when you're visible, you can share your message with the world. You can make a difference. Those people who desperately need your help in their lives, those people who are struggling and stuck and maybe even in pain, those people who have maybe been stuck in patterns for years and years and years, and you are the person who is meant to be there to support them. And they've been waiting because they can't see you because you're hiding and you're not being visible and you're not marketing and you're not owning your value and you're not selling and because you're not doing these things your sole clients are there struggling when you flip it around like that and you instead start going wow like actually it's like this is something I've had in me forever. Like I realized that helping people, supporting people, getting inside their brain, twisting it around, coming up with creative new ideas, all of this is part of who I am. It's my purpose. And I realized that by not owning the marketing aspect of owning a business, I was basically not allowing myself to fully live my purpose. Now what's really funny, <laughs> is that obviously I am now freaking super passionate about marketing. It's what I help every one of my clients with. It's how to get visible and how to really create that powerful message and get out there and sell it and put together offers that feel super aligned and sell them in a way that feels really easy because because you're confident about them and you know the value that they bring. Like, this is now what I do. So going back to that time where I was in such resistance and I would be like, I hate this stuff and I don't want to. And I both have to when I finally got out of my own way and I changed the story and I started seeing actually what I was not allowing myself to see, it all started to change. I started marketing. I started being visible. I started learning. I invested in the things to actually learn how to market my business properly I started to make it a priority I didn't do it the cookie cutter way because that was never gonna be me I found my own ways to do it and within that I found my own strategies that worked beautifully for me that felt in massive alignment and it was in doing that that I then really started to be able to make more of an impact and more of an income that I really needed so how can you flip that switch on your mindset around visibility, marketing, sharing your message, selling. How can you flip that switch so it starts to feel empowering and actually almost that, oh my God, who am I not to do this? I need to get out there and do this. It's my duty, it's my purpose. Um, so how can you change that around? We've got, yes, yes, yes. Uh, you love the, you love the idea, <laughs> talk about the leaflets, yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Laura, you go to Westfield today, you're putting some business cards in books. That's so funny. Um, does this make sense though? Around the magic marketing, how can you start looking at this in a, a different way? And this is one of the key things that I do with my gorgeous women in the mastermind and in the academy because the first thing we need to do is we need to get you excited about showing up in your business. We need to get you excited about some of these marketing ways that are going to help you make a much bigger impact and a much bigger income from a place of more ease and super freaking alignment so that you can step into that life you want to be living now so that you can have that business that you dream of so that you can be living life fully on your terms are you with me are you ready to flick the switch on the marketing give me a little hell yes Whew. and that's what i really wanted to share today so just to recap um tell me what's your takeaway what are you implementing make sure you do your task 
Um, the reason, by the way, that I sometimes do that, like my page and give a comment is because my daughter, my youngest, my daughter, loves those YouTube channels where, you know, there's those girls who are like, I don't know, they're just doing crazy things. They're like unwrapping toys and all kinds of things. And there's these two girls who are sisters and on their video all the time, and I hear it all the time, it's like, I hear them go, like our channel, like our dad, da da I'm like, those kids are marketing geniuses. <laughs> we need to all do that a little bit more, right, and own it. So make sure you've liked the video for every day. Make sure you put a comment for every day. Make sure you do the task every day and you will be in to win. Tomorrow, I'm going to talk to you about launching, what it is, why you need to really get your head around launching and how you can do it in a love-fueled way. Love fuels launching, baby. So we're going to be talking about that because this is one of the essential aspects that are going to bring in those sales into your business. I'm also tomorrow going to officially open the doors on the mastermind. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about it. I'm going to share the page, share the page tomorrow, so you can go and have a look and you can read what it's all about. Um, also, no, not tomorrow, Friday. I've got two interviews with two of the gorgeous women that I'm currently working with, so you can hear from them. And if there's a part of you that's going I'm ready to do this and I want the support and I know I need help on the marketing side but I also need help with someone who's just got me and doesn't let me step back and, and, and like just keep on going the way I'm going I know I need more of this I know I need to step into this more and I want more from my business and I want to receive more from my business um then this mastermind could literally be the perfect thing that you've been looking for, especially if you resonate with my energy and you've enjoyed this kind of challenge so far. Of course, we've got two full days left. Whew. And then I'm going to clearly need a holiday because there's a lot of energy going on here. <laughs> Are you feeling it? If you're enjoying this as well, I'd love you to invite if you've got like business besties and all of that kind of thing. And yes, business besties is super cheesy but let's own it and um, then please do invite them into the group how do you access the previous tasks so coco if you're signed up to the challenge then you'll be receiving an email each day that has a task on it Otherwise, you just need to watch the video because um, on day one video and day two video, they're still available. You can still catch up on them. Um, and they're going to be available till after the weekend because I know that you'll all want to see it all and you might even want to go back to things. Um, so go back, watch those. I talk about the tasks on there. But there's awesome information on there, so you're going to want to actually watch them. Um, Debs, your daughter loves those YouTubers. I know my daughter does as well. It's like, get a phone off her. Um, Lila, Claire, explains them in her oh, Thank you. Um, Julia, Hello, um, Natalie, really enjoying this, Claire. Thank you, Natalie. Elena, feeling it 100%. Love your energy. Thank you so much. So thank you so much, all of you, for being here today. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've got some real takeaways. And remember, it's not just about knowing this. It's taking action and to, to back it up, to take that little, mm, ah, ooh, kind of realization and do something different so whether it's like owning the queen label or living your crazy a little bit more and or whatever it might be just actually take action on it do something because that's the thing that's going to change it and, and create that um momentum that you want in your business in your visibility in your owning all of you and all of your greatness um i'll see you again 10 30 tomorrow Thank you for being here live. Tag me in. I can't wait to see all your, uh, all your tasks. Um, and if you've got any questions, you can either message me or pop them in the group. And yeah, send lots of love. Go and have an amazing day. Um, I'll just quickly see these other comments. Really enjoying this, Claire. Thank you, Natalie. Um, thanks, Claire. Have a great day. You too. Mwah. Okay, bye, everyone. Bye.